Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz. Glad to be with you on another edition of Parrish's Three Pointers here on CBSSports.com. Gary Parrish, of course, our CBSSports.com college basketball columnist. He was in Winston-Salem Sunday night for the Wake Forest North Carolina game and joins us on the phone as he does every single Monday. And uh, Gary, when we talk about Wake Forest right now, we were always asking the question, who is this team? Who have they beaten? Now they've beaten North Carolina. What do you take out of Wake Forest? I mean, they've, they've established themselves as one of the top two or three four best teams in the country, a, a legitimate ACC contender, a legitimate Final Four contender, national title contender, all those things. They've always had the talent. Um, you, you, Jeff Teague, Al Farouk um, you know James Johnson, Ty Walker, Tony Wood, those guys, the talent was there. NBA scouts knew it. Um, the only question was, were they too young, and could Dino Gaudio handle a team like this? I think we got answers to both of those, and, and the answer is no, they're not too young, and yes, he can handle a team like this. To go to BYU and win, made some people pay attention. Then they back it with a win over North Carolina last night. It's a serious team, and, and uh, as good as I think uh, even the optimistic Wake, Wake Forest fans could have hoped for, uh, again, as far as talent, um, composure, you know, veteran leadership, everything you want from a team, they've got it right now. And they're off to their best start in, in 28 years. Gary, uh, North Carolina is now 0-2 in the ACC, so that begs the question, is Wake the favorite in the conference? Maybe Duke, or is it still North Carolina? Well, b before the season, it was not even a conversation. North Carolina was the clear favorite consensus. Now that we can even have this discussion, suggests that it, it's close. And with Wake Forest um, winning last night, with Carolina losing to Boston College before this, um, yeah, I mean it's up for grabs. I, I, I think if you wanted to say Wake or Duke, either one, you'd be, you'd be, uh, you know, you'd have a fair case. Carolina at this very moment is in last place in the ACC. Now that's not going to stand that way, and, and I think they'll be there at the end. But are they, you know, and again, this stuff's easy to see in hindsight, but are they necessarily the most talented team in the ACC? You could argue that Wake Forest is. Um, and then Duke is always Duke. So I, I think you've got a three-team race with Clemson right there on the, on the heels, and Clemson being another top-10 team that might not just be able to crack those top three in the ACC. So um, it, it's going to be a great league race, and uh, I think you know if you wanted to make Wake Forest, Carolina, Duke your favorite, you can be reasonable doing any of that. And, and Clemson along with Wake Forest, one of the three undefeateds left in college basketball. Let's talk about the uh, top of the Big East, Gary. And uh, Earlier this season, you and I had a conversation about Marquette and the lack of a big man that the Golden Eagles have. So when you look at the top of the Big East and see that Marquette is 4-0 with wins over Villanova and West Virginia, how surprised are you? I am surprised that they're 4-0 in the Big East, 15-2 and overall. But let's try to put it in context. The wins are against Villanova, Cincinnati, Rutgers, and West Virginia. So that's a, a good team in Villanova, but they're not necessarily big either. Cincinnati is okay, Rutgers is bad, and West Virginia is good and physical, but not necessarily big. So. Um, Marquette still has to face Greg Monroe, Luke Herringote, Hashim Thabit, Samardo Samuels, Dewan Blair, and Lorenzo Anawoko. Uh, that, that still is coming. So we'll see how that goes. But 15-2 and two is 15-2, and two, and Buzz Williams is doing a hell of a job. He's got wins over Wisconsin, Villanova, and West Virginia. That means his team's legit, and he, he's been a, a pleasant surprise for Marquette fans. Well, the last gentleman you mentioned plays for Syracuse, and they're also at the top of the Big East at 4-0, but you're talking about teams that they've played and their four wins over South Florida, DePaul, Seton Hall, and Rutgers, four of the bottom five in the Big East. Now you look at their schedule moving forward, and this is the real part of the Big East, and it starts Wednesday with a game at Georgetown. Where do you think we're going to be talking about Syracuse when the Big East is done here come March? They're a legitimate contender. I mean, any roster with uh... – with, with Johnny Flynn, Paul Harris, Eric Devendorf, they, they, that roster is good. I love the roster, perhaps as much as I love any roster, maybe because I've always been a Paul Harris fan since his AAU days. So I'm a believer. They've got a great point guard, a physical big man, at least two shooters, at least two drivers, a lockdown defender. They're all experienced. This could be a Final Four team, as far as I'm concerned. Now, remember, you could finish fifth or sixth in the Big East and still be a Final Four team. That's the nature of the league this year. But they're going to be there at the end. Um, they're better than most people thought they would be. And, again, I love the roster. So, uh, you know, I think definitely an NCAA tournament team. Definitely a team that can advance, advance, and if they end up in Detroit, I won't be surprised at all. And set, but they do have a tough schedule to navigate here, like a lot of teams in the Big East, seven to the next eight against top 25 teams. Gary, real quickly, uh, a team that will probably be in the top 25 this week has not been all season. That's Cal, off to the best start since 1960-61. Uh, why haven't we talked about this team all season? Well, their big early win was at UNLV, but it came Thanksgiving weekend while we were still focused on turkey and football in the Old Spice <laughs> Classic in Orlando. 
Then they backed it with a loss to Florida State. And then two games after that, they were destroyed by Missouri. So once that happened, people stopped paying attention or decided to never start paying attention. But now they've won nine straight, including wins against Arizona State and Washington. So that's a pretty good team. And it's why they've debuted at number two, 22 in the top 25 and one. I mean, Mike Montgomery's proving that he's a, a, a legitimate big-time Hall of Fame caliber coach. Top 25 and one, of course, your weekly poll that comes out at the end of every week or Sunday night heading into Monday morning. Gary Parrish, thank you very much, sir. We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks, Jason. All right, folks, Gary Parrish, you can hear from him every single week here on CBSSports.com and, of course, read his articles all throughout the week as he's blogging every single day because that man is probably the hardest-working college basketball man in all of sports. For Gary Parrish, I'm Jason Horwitz. That's it for Parrish's Three-Pointers. Take care, folks.